Hello, welcome to another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, today, we're not going to look at cryptic crosswords or even Sudoku. We're going to look at another sort of logic problem, the Kukuru. Um, this puzzle is slightly different. Um, it uses some of the things that we might see in a killer Sudoku, I guess. Um, and I'm not quite sure how much I have to say about it in terms of uh, logical solving. I mean, I have one or two points to make, which, which I will do. Um, but what I thought might be interesting is for you guys to see uh, speed solving in, in operation when it comes to these puzzles. Um, so I think on the site before I've mentioned nickly.com, which is a great Japanese website where you can uh, basically solve logic problems. They are all handcrafted logic problems. And then you can compare how you did against some of the fastest solvers in the world. And in my opinion, the fastest Kokuru solver in the world is Jason Zofranieri. He's a friend of mine, a uh, very nice guy, and has a peculiar skill when it comes to these puzzles, um, as I'm about to show you. So what's on screen is a Kokuru from uh, a couple of weeks ago um, that appeared on the site. This one's rated easy. And if we just take a quick look at it, we can see we can see why it's easy. So there's there's lots of uh, combinations here that, that that can only be one way. So if we compare, for example, this ten number in three cells here, that, there's obviously a few different ways that that could be created. And therefore, from a Kuru solving point of view, this this answer is relatively open and not straightforward. However, Let's look at, for example, these fours in, in two cells. They have to be one and three. The seven has to be one, two, and four. This 23 has to be six, eight, and nine. And you can immediately see that if this has to be six, eight, and nine, this would have to be the six here because we can put an eight or nine into this square and without this square being a negative number. Now, there are var variations on Kokuru that allow you to include negative numbers in the... Uh, in the cells and they are far far harder maybe we'll look at those on another day um, but yeah this is an this is an easy graded puzzle and you may think well I could probably solve that in relatively quickly let's look at the recommended time so this is sort of uh, 57 minutes is um, I think is suggested if you're relatively new to these things 13 minutes is an average time and then an expert time is three minutes um, watch this uh, this is this is real time solve. You can see I've got it on times one speed, so this is normal speed, um, not sped up at all. Um, and uh, yeah, it won't take um, Jason very long. Um, I think he he's been doing these since he was a boy. So don't worry too much if you're looking at this thinking uh, what is going on. Is he some sort of brain man? He's not. In fact, just a normal guy, just very very clever. Um, and I think part of the skill with this is almost um, word search esque. It's a particular. He's finished it already. It's a particular way of reading that that he's able to employ that allows him to um, see the patterns as they must be going in very quickly. So, you know, he's he's seeing this seven and this four. He's immediately able to write the one in here, the three, and then as he's entering the the one, you know, he's using the cursor keys on his keyboard to immediately fly down, um, fly down the grid, as you can see there. Whoa! I mean, it really is very, very impressive. Um, so, how can you get this good? Well, you have to start young, I think, and do a, a lot of practice. You have to be very, very familiar with some of the, um, with, well, with all of the obvious combinations. So, if we just take a quick look at this grid. I mean, I went through some of them already, but 11 in four cells is very common, and that's always going to be 1, 2, 3, and 5. 24 in three cells is always going to be 7, 8, and 9. Slightly longer one here, 35 in five cells, that's always going to be 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Um, and you just have to learn these. If you want to be really uh, become an expert solver of Kuru puzzles, you must know all of these combinations. I'm just going to pause the video now while I load up a harder puzzle. Okay. Um, so this puzzle is rated hard. The last one was rated um, 
it's rated easy. Uh, you can see the expert time here is recommended to be 13 minutes uh, and Jason solved it in 2 minutes 18 which is uh, again by far the fastest on the site. Um, and let's just take a quick look at this and, uh, and think about how we might solve it as relatively uh, inexpert solvers. Um, although you know, I have done a lot of these in the past. And we see this number 42 here in 7 cells and that's that's an interesting uh, other sort of form of entry you see in these puzzles because what you have to realize about long entries that are just short of the number 45 is that this entry will not contain a 1 or a 2 um, because uh, we know that the numbers 1 to 9 sum to 45 so if you have a, a 7 cell entry it's missing two of the numbers 1 to 45 because we can never repeat an, a number in an answer in a Kikuru. And if it's missing two numbers, those two numbers have to add up to three, therefore they have to be 1 and 2. So there's a slightly different logical uh, thought process you need to go through with some of these very uh, long entries to compare to some of the short entries. You can see again there's lots of 4s, there's lots of 3s, 23 sum that we've seen before. Uh, this 28 again, this is 28 in 7. So we know that this one is missing 17. The two numbers that add up to 17 are the only two numbers that add up to 17 are 8 and 9. So this 28 entry does not contain an 8 or a 9. And again, that will be important in the solving process. Um, so you know you can see how we could. Uh, for example, we could fill this square in, this would have to be a 1 because a 7 entry cannot contain a 3. So this would be 1, 3, 1, uh, 2, 1, 4, and we're looking to place the 5 somewhere, which probably has to be here, uh, etc. But the way I would do it is probably much the way you would do it. I would gradually build up answers, and at some stage I may even write in little pencil marks to help remind me of what cells uh, I'll watch. Now Jason will not do that ever. I've never seen him write pencil marks in um, when solving. So let's just have a look at how an expert solver tackles a hard puzzle. Go. Um, so again, the numbers are flying in. I mean, oh, I mean, yeah, I have to say as somebody who competes in speed solving competitions in Sudoku World Puzzle Championships. I'm looking at the speed he's solving this at and it is seriously, seriously impressive. Um, I mean there's barely cause for any thought at all. It's, it almost seems like he's just writing the numbers in as fast as he can type them. I mean it's, it's not far off that pace. Um, and yeah, the only a guide I can give you is, as I've said, he is absolutely familiar with all of these totals, um, the restricted number set that's needed to solve them, and as I said before, it's almost a type of word search technique, I think, in the sense that his his eyes are being drawn to patterns um, rather than particular cells and numbers, and yeah, a lot of experience, but it's 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 something else to watch this actually live. It's also interesting in the sense that you know we all read in a particular way you know we read left to right down the page whereas I think when you look at an expert solver solving this sort of puzzle you can see that the way he's his eyes are moving is in a very peculiar way from my perspective anyway you know where I find him suddenly putting in the next digits is not where I'm looking at all whoa whoa Jason that's completely crazy and there he's done it so something a bit different today um, I thought you know once in a while it's nice to look at you know absolute genius on um, uh, in these videos and um, I would submit to you we've seen that today so thanks for watching We'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic.